All right. I was trying to figure out how to uh, get some music going in the background because it's it's kind of quiet and uh, eerie out here. Um, but this is headquarters, and this is going to be the start in the fall. If there is one, there are there will be one. <laughs> Welcome to the welcome to the podcast. Um, this is just a little some rant I'm putting together just for the hobby and people who are interested in wanting to learn about cards and you know want, are curious about what other people's knowledge is because I'm not saying what I'm saying is the way. I'm just saying this is this is what I do. So enjoy. Um, thank you for thank you for tuning in. I want you to smash the subscribe button. Please like and subscribe. It'll really help me out. I'm trying to get this channel up off the ground and flying through Pokeville downtown. Right down the time, right down Times Square. Right there, you know. I'm trying to get this I don't want to be big. I just want, want a hobby. I also have a store on eBay. My link is gonna be down below. So if you guys are interested in any of the cards you see tonight, or furthermore, any cards at all, I have a huge, huge vintage and modern collection that's not part of my personal that i just have for selling and that's what i got into this hobby back into it for was just to continue to selling because there was so much money in it and i knew about it because i did it when i was a kid but then nostalgia kicked in and i was like whoa this brought me right back to my childhood and not only did i start becoming a collector again <clears throat> i started my own <clears throat> excuse me started my own collection back up my personal collection aside from what i have to offer for for sale which is a lot of cards i mean i spent the last three and a half years buying and selling cards i mean non-stop uh, non-stop so i've had ups i've had downs i've been robbed i've been threatened um, i've had good times i've had bad times um, but right now I'm kind of even, you know, mellow, straightening back out and flying, flying level again, you know, and, you know, I just keep hearing motherfuckers, excuse me, I keep hearing stuff outside of my shop and it's just really bugging me because I'm kind of paranoid because not that long ago I just got, I got robbed and, um, I made the mistake by showing somebody a little too much of something you know they got a little too close a little a little too close into my bubble and saw what uh, what i had out that was you know because not i keep everything i have very tight to me i have lots of safes i have lock boxes i have other properties and i keep my stuff there but i have a little bit of it on me here at all times like my personal collection sort of you know my my dollar, my top cards that I want to post, and, and uh, it's my job. That's what I do for work. And um, one night I just got careless, and um, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, I let the wolf into the cage. I let I opened the door for the wolves, and uh, I got bit, and it hurt. So I'm still recovering from that, but I'm a little paranoid, as you can see. Uh, we got major surveillance inside the house. Um, it's hard to be back out in here in this room because I, I, there's no windows here out here. This is strictly a studio room that I built for this. And um, it's hard to be out here because I don't, I hear any little noise I hear out there. I think, you know, someone's going to come kicking through that door. And, you know, I got protection. I just don't want to use it. You know, I don't want to do that. I don't want to, I don't want to go to that point. I don't want to go that far. It's not who I am. All right. This is about Pokemon, man. This is about a hobby. And it almost got like that. It almost got that far, you know, about a month ago. And it scared me. And it almost made me walk away from it. 
I was this close to walking away from it. And I almost, you know, it's still bouncing around in my head. Like, this ain't worth it, man. This ain't worth it. These guys out here take this shit way too serious. I mean, they will kill you over these fucking cards, man. And it's just, it's just a game. You know, it reminds me of being a kid. That's what I like about it. Well, and the thousands of dollars that they're worth. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Like that, I hear something out there. You know, it's just like, what the hell is it? Makes me want to grab my gun and go see what the fuck it is. I don't know. I'm moving on. I'm making a fucking podcast and I don't give a shit if anyone hears it. This stuff is fantastic, by the way. Not sponsored. And I'm not plugging them. I kind of am. stuff's amazing anyways so this podcast is gonna be i think only about 15 minutes long we're gonna touch on three things or try to touch on three things so what time is it uh we got okay we've been now we've been doing this we've been live now for about six minutes so we're gonna go 15 minutes tonight just real short let's see how it I'm going to see how that kind of ruffles the feathers of the community. Um, so I'm going to be taking notes throughout this, guys. So just, you know, hang with me. Um, I'm just trying to get a kind of a base set feeling of how this is going to play out and, a, and then a routine on how I'm going to do it. And, you know, I got to get the cob, shake the cobbles out. I got to get the, the iggy biggy boogie doogies out of me and, and feel it, you know, feel it. But, and this is what I want to do. So this is what I'm going to do. Then you get my mind out the gutter and you stop f worrying about these idiots while I'm rolling around here because I tell you what, if they come back here again, I'm going to shoot them. <laughs> Plain as day. So they don't want to be shot. I got lots of guns here, so... I don't think they want to get shot, <laughs> you know? No one wants to get shot. <clears throat> Anyways, moving on. By the way, don't forget to like and subscribe. And then check out my eBay link down below if you like any of the cards you see. Um, today, or to, I'm going to try to fit in this 15 minutes here. We're going to go over some grading um, and what it's, what, how it is so out of control right now. Um, some frauds of fake pokies, you know. Just watch out for them. Um, because they're there and they almost, I almost got, I almost got it bad the other day. <clears throat> and then um, investing, to wrap it up. Is Pokemon a good investment? And like, you hear that, you see all these, all these thumbnails. Right? Telling you how Pokemon are great investment, invest in whatever you can, go all in. Well, I'm telling you right now, if you want something to be a fast return in this, it's not going to happen. Don't invest in the Pokemon if you want to. If you want to get rich overnight, it's not. It's not the type of investment. You're not going to get rich overnight. It's more of a long-term investment. Make a plan. Take the cards. Bring them into your collection. Bring them into your vault. Price them. And the ones you think that will gain value over time, your Watsies, your any vintage, low pop, low pop, sealed product, tuck those away. Put those in your vault. Put those in your personal collection. Then, Start attacking the new the new sets, you know. The, when I got back into it, it was the Chilling Rains and the Battle Styles and the um, my favorite Evolving Skies. 
That's my favorite set of all time. Um, <clears throat> now you got um. I love Chilling Rain too. Chilling Rain is just it's great. Darkness Ablaze. You got um, tag team. Um, I mean, there's a lot of sets out there, and we're gonna be going over them in the next. I think the next the next podcast is gonna be about card sets and stuff like that. And I think I want to do something real quick. I want to plug it. I want to recommend anyone getting into the hobby. Go get yourself a copy of this book right here. This book is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, it is awesome. It shows, it gets you right into the mix of it. It gets you right up to speed with everything you want to know. I mean, it is absolutely the greatest thing to come along for a collector in this hobby since the card itself. Um, it just shows, it has so much so much valuable information that you weren't going to get anywhere else you can't find it online you can't find it in the internet the only way you can find it is by going over months and hours and hours and months and months of searching packs you know making uh packaging sending out the cards um doing card lots and i mean just hours and hours of online doing that stuff is that's when you get the feeling of how the market works and doing it and being around it but that takes time this this book gives you a little jump start dive right into it, man. It got me I was just it was like a drug. I was like, whoa, and I was on it. I'm gone, you know? And um <clears throat> It really brought me down to uh It really let me know what the, the real shit is, because there's a lot of fake stuff out there. There's a lot of fake prices, astronomical prices. Cards that are priced way too high. And um so you gotta you gotta kinda dig around and get to the the root of the of the card price and get what the real price is, you know? So that's what I say. You know, when I'm looking up prices online and I go to price a card, a raw card, just one card, I'll go to the eBay last sold listings in a raw card because right now i'm not getting anything graded right now i'm gonna maybe start with gma here soon but right now i'm not getting anything graded so really i'm not making a lot of money but i'm getting things set and ready to go if that makes sense because i'll be damned am i gonna be paying that much money for grading are you serious right now what is it? psa has lost their damn mind i don't i don't know if i want to go back to them you know but they're the premium i like bgs but they're doing the same thing CGC is just way too strict. Um, I'm going to try GMA. And then um, hopefully TCC opens up and takes... Uh, I think it's going to be a while until he opens up because he needs help. Um, but I think it's going to be GMA for right now. They, they're affordable. Um, they don't seem like they're too mom and pop-ish. You know, I don't know. I don't think their slabs bring any kind of value like PSA does. But, but I need that slab. I need that grade. And PSA is giving it for a hundred bucks, a hundred bucks a card. I'm not going to do it. A hundred dollars a card. Oh my God, dude. Two years ago, it was $8 a card. Absolutely fucking phenomenal. It's, it's just, that just absolutely blows my mind. I can't, that, it just angers me so much that they can do that, you know? And it just hurts the hobby so much. And, um, but we're letting it, we're letting them do it because we keep going back and people are paying these prices and <laughs> It got to hurt the pocketbook, I tell you that. But um, yeah, for collectors for everyone, it says um, theme decks like booster packs, booster boxes, where to buy cards, best way to collect cards. The best way to collect Pokemon cards is to buy the cards individually. It is much more expensive, although a lot more fun, to open up sealed products when co collecting. If collect. If collecting sealed products is a, your the preferred way to booster boxes are the best value, I personally open up two booster boxes of each new set plus all the sealed products released within the set, then spend $100 to $150 on the cards I have not yet pulled from the packs to complete the set. That's a great strategy. Great strategy. He dabbles in the booster boxes, right? Because he knows he's going to get the major, those really hard hits right off the bat of some little booster boxes. He's going to pull out two alternate R's. And then hopefully he gets a hot box. Maybe he pulls out some good shit. And then 
he bounces over to um he'll go for the sealed packs to kind of sweep up everything and then he'll spend about 100 150 bucks on just buying it all up and there you know you got your set and you're off and running moon on the next one that's a great way to collect just a <laughs> it's a really great way to collect um smart and uh, no nonsense crap right to the point um i gotta highlight this here hold on guys So, I mean, that's kind of what I did when I started out, you know, to get all my feet is I just, I, just, I invested probably about $3,000 into the hobby. Uh, I got my case of Evolving Skies. I got my tins. I got my cases of cars and I just started opening, opening and opening and opening and opening. And I, um, I, I just manifested this huge, very, very powerful collection. I mean, very expensive collection. I turned my three thousand dollars probably into about five, six thousand dollars, just off of this, um, just off of me buying modern cars, and then along with my vintage collection that I still have. Um, I also bought a huge vintage collection off my buddy. He he passed away. Um, you know, may him rest in peace, man. And but I, I have his cards. He, uh, I had the privilege of getting him off him before he passed away. Actually, a while before he passed away, but I mean, they couldn't be in any better hands, you know, because now they are, can they can live on and do their thing. I don't know where they're gonna go after me, but right now they're safe. So they're getting taken care of, and a shit ton of them are gonna be about to get graded. So we're just trying to figure out who. But uh, so yeah, I got my base. So I've invested my money. I went out and I didn't invest in sealed product. I just invested in the modern sets that would I think would I thought would bring me the most value, and I made sure I bought smartly. I made sure I bought things that I didn't think were weighed, tampered with, um, cases that have been broken open, resealed, um, cases that's been weighed and gone through, Charizard hunting, you know, anything from card shops. I stayed away. I strictly ordered from online sealed cases, and that's it. And I saw after a while, it started bringing me the hits. You know, I was getting really good hits. Bam, 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 bam. While I'm seeing other guys just get crap. You know, they're getting a whole booster box. They ain't giving them nothing. And it's because, well, they're buying booster boxes that aren't sealed. They're coming in 36 or 32 packs loosely in a bag. <laughs> so who knows where those packs came from? How, if they're heavy, if they're light, what, what who knows? So I, I caught onto that real quick. And um, that was a big one for me, so... Yeah, that's just investment. So we're gonna start, we're just gonna jump right into investment, really. Investing, investing, I believe 100% invest in Pokemon. 100% invest your money into Pokemon. It is a safe investment. Uh, Pokemon's not going anywhere. Um, and it's gonna get nothing but more and more expensive. The vintage cards that you own and that I own, that we have here, that we're gonna get graded the first editions the team rockets, the fossils, the jungles, um, the they they're gonna only get more expensive as time goes on. Um, they're out of print. They're not being printed. You gotta remember that there's no print going on with these things, so they're just gonna get more expensive. So I highly suggest. I, I highly believe. I'm a high highly believer in investing in Pokemon. Most people aren't. Most people think I'm crazy, but. I just don't see it um dying down and with any kind of collectible card out there, whether it be sports or Pokemon or anything like that. I mean, I'm dumping into like Final Fantasy and these cards, uh, and there's some cards that are selling for thousands of dollars. And so uh, I just see this as a huge, huge, sneaky market of investment that can pay off big time in the end if you just do it right. And with the help of social media, uh, I think you can work hand in hand with social media and, and your eBay store and you can make a lot of money. And that's what I'm going to try to do. And I'd like you all to come along for the ride and see if it happens. So, that's where we're at now.
I'm gonna take one more break, guys. Catch you.